Here we are up in Scotland and thought it was time to do a little video on my GTC4 Lusso. We've been up here for a week driving around, having a bit of fun, going to see some different hotels, checking out some different sites. I've been getting up early, taking some photos and stuff like that. But I think it's time for my thoughts on the car. So do a little wander around, get in, but more importantly, go for a drive so you can hear the noise. Fruity start up, as always. In the car, temps are super low. T temperatures have been tricky. <laughs> just, <laughs> I just put the seat back and the Ferrari was like, no, not today. <laughs> this is an essential item in this car because <laughs> it always resets your seat somewhere else. <sighs> okay, time to go. <laughs> on the road the more every morning starting this car on this trip it's two degrees outside we've had a little bit of fluctuation in temperature takes a bit of time the engine warms up quite quickly um, what when it's sort of below 40 degrees it won't actually change gear it like automatically and then once it's warmed up it will automatically ping it into auto and uh, and start changing gears which I thought was kind of smart to help it help it warm up if I flip through here, I've got the tire temperatures, which I've had it once where they've turned on and been correct, but they normally wait till about 10 degrees. So my tires will be about two. And that's been one of the biggest problems on this trip. Uh, I've got the Pirellis, is actually getting heat into the rear tires. The fronts, I think, get a reasonable amount of warming, one from more, more weight over the front, but also braking. So you heat up the front brakes and that heats up the front tires. Whereas the rears, just don't have any grip so even in comfort well I mean wet at the moment but in comfort you'll still like spin the rears just on a like half throttle um, sport it will spin them more which maybe if you did about a couple of hundred meters of burnouts at the start of your drive you'd get some warm tires but it's something you really have to think about because they just have no traction cold <laughs> stuck so I tried to just pop the seat forward to get my camera and it shut and it's now squashed my head. So I can't. The choice, this is the seat mechanism. So in most cars it clicks. In this car it doesn't click. So when you leave it, it's, it's quite annoying if you're trying to get in the back. One of the features that's been quite useful has been the heated and cooling seats. Now cooling, not so useful up here, but the heated seats actually of cars I've been in, I would say they are definitely not the quickest. My Audi was much faster. I think on these, it probably takes about five minutes before you start to really feel, feel the burn. <laughs> um, so a little comment on the Ferrari full electric heated seats. Don't look up the price. As you can see, it's pretty sunny, so I think uh, sunglasses warranted. Let's talk a little bit about the car. Steering. Uh, the steering on this particular car, now I would really like to drive another one, is a little odd. It's, it's a hydraulic setup, and manoeuvring the vehicle versus my 812 is very different. It's, it feels like it suddenly changes direction. So to be smooth, you have to be super, super smooth with all the steering inputs, like it's tiny movement. Otherwise it feels like there's a dramatic change in shift in the, in the weight of the car, which I'm not a massive fan of. And I, I suspect it's either tires or suspension geometry or something. The car drives nice in a straight line, but in a corner, it's, it, it, there's something a little bit off. There's something I'm gonna, work on because I don't believe I've spoken to someone else that has one and he has no problems whatsoever so I think this car just has a geo issue that needs sorting something like that gearbox great gearbox put it in uh, in sport this car currently is completely stock doesn't have the valve system which I'm going to change so that you can have the valves open all the time so right now for example valves are shut cars really quiet 
I would quite like it when I'm cruising along to be making a burbly sound, to be making that noise without having to drive faster. If you get it also when you drive faster, obviously, but you also on the down revs, whatever that's called, you get loads of crack and burble noise if you have the valves open all the time. But driving the car in sort of manual, you get to hear the V12, the lovely V12. And that is what this car is all about. It's just amazing sounds with four seats. On the way up, we had a passenger. Uh, he was probably, he's about six foot and he was perfectly comfortable in the back. I don't think you've got too much luggage space for three, four people, but two people doing a cruise, great. Three, I think if you filled the passenger seat with luggage, you're, you're onto a winner. But let's, uh, let's carry on driving, make some good noise. Ziz, <laughs> make some good noises and uh, see you in a bit. There we go, no traction. <laughs> the engine in this car, and in every every car I've driven that has a similar similar powertrain, is such a standout. I mean, you can hear that amazing noise, but it has so much mid-range torque, range torque, and obviously a lot of horsepower upper end that it just punches so hard, and it. <laughs> And it means you have to be really careful because it has so much power and so much torque versus the grip level, definitely in the wet as well, or even like just cold, that it will just chirp the rears. And that's even in comfort. So that's the one of the more restrictive Sounds so good, so good. Onwards. Stopping for a bit of sightseeing. This is the Falkirk wheel behind. Big engineering job. I'm gonna go have a look at that. Now, I had not come across this until today. It's pretty cool. So, it basically does that. And it's perfectly balanced by the weight on each end. Apparently it uses the equivalent of, I think it's five kettles to turn from top to bottom, or bottom to top. It's a pretty impressive bit of engineering, that. Quite cool. We're on the motorway, cruising along at sort of 70-ish, as you can probably hear. This is not the best tarmac section, but so it's probably a little bit loud. But the ride and compliance of this car, very low speed. I would say it is, it's worse than my 812, but like generally pretty good. I suspect the 812 just rounded off stuff a little bit better. I think that's a tire related issue. That was on Michelin's, it's on Pirelli's. Um, but overall, really quite comfy, combined with the seats, these, the full electric seats are just really comfy. But as soon as you start going up to any sort of speed, 30, 40, 50, whatever above, it just, cruises down a road really nicely and it's not too stiff or anything like that and it's just actually a really nice car to cover distance and also go moderately quickly on a country road at the same time so yeah a nice a nice place to be and not too sporty we've made it to our destination those are pretty much my thoughts on the gtc4 so in conclusion I think it's a brilliant car. For me, the usage is, it's so much better than the 812 for my usage, especially now that we've got a baby coming along the way. So more space, we can have every, the whole family in. And just quickly, let's just show you how full the car is. This was two people with a decent, dec quite big size bags, but that is full, so. That's an example, I think it's 450 litres in there. 
there we go that's my thoughts on the Lusso for now and see you guys in the next video